paper so often in our lives that we really don't think about where it comes from. But there is an artist in DeKalb County that knows exactly where the paper she works with comes from, right in her own studio. Once Claudia Lee first learned about the way paper could be used in art, she was hooked and made it her life's work. Let's visit Liberty Paper in Liberty, Tennessee and see just how beautiful paper can be. I started out as a weaver and um, that moved into hand dyeing and hand spinning, which it often does. And when I was taking a class at a workshop in hand spinning, there was a woman working in the back room and I went in to see what she was doing. She was making paper. This was 35, 40 years ago. And the minute I saw it, I knew I wanted to do that. Um, but it was nobody doing it and I didn't know anything about it or how to do it. And it was a while before I was able to actually meet somebody who could show me how to do it. And it's so simple, but I didn't know that. And um, I've been doing it ever since. That's been my big thing. It could be as simple as recycled papers, which a lot of people are familiar with, of just taking some old papers and tearing them up and soaking them in water and putting them in a blender and you've got pulp. Um, but you can also go out and find plants and harvest the plants, cook them, and then, just like a vegetable, basically, softening them up, and then beat them into pulp and make amazing papers from all different plants. Paper is cellulose, and that is found in plants. So almost all plants have enough cellulose to make paper. Um, and that makes it really exciting. I made iris paper and yucca paper and things like that. And of course, in the studio, I use abaca, which is a banana leaf fiber from the Philippines, primarily. Um, I use cotton rag, old denim, um, which is co just cotton, it's a cotton plant. Um, flax, apica and flax and hemp um, are all popular with hand paper makers and, and they make beautiful paper. And then you can supplement them with any kind of plant out in the yard and go out and pull something up and cook it and make paper out of it. And the thing about paper is um, it's instant, it's like instant gratification, it's functional. It's making your own art supplies. So the really cool thing is I'm an artist, besides being a paper maker, that if I have a project, I can design a paper just for that project. I don't have to rely on what's available in the store that looks like everybody else's because they're all using the same paper. And um, that's been fantastic to be able to do that. And just constantly changing and throwing things in the vat and seeing what happens, it's just, this instantaneous um, satisfaction, it's just so appealing. The papers are great, they're fun to use. When I make paper in my studio, I usually use um, pulp that comes in sheet forms that um, I then soak in water and I put in a piece of machinery called a Hollander beater. My first step is beating that pulp to my specifications for whatever kind of paper that I want to make. Drain it, put it in a vat, which is just a big container full of water. There's nothing else in it but water. And stir the pulp in there. And then I dip a mold and deco into the pulp. The mold and deco is a screen. It's a frame with a screen on it that contains the pulp in the, um, on the screen. And that's going to be your paper because you're going to dip it into the vat of water and pulp and bring it up and the water drains out and the sheet of paper is left on the surface. And then you take it and you turn it upside down. It's called couching, from the French coucher to, make, to lay down. And um, you lay it down onto a felt, it's a heavy fabric, and sponge the back of the screen and the screen comes off and there's your paper. It goes through a press, goes through a dryer, and it's done. Firstly, I make paper for other people, for calligraphers and bookbinders and pretty much anybody that likes paper. Um, but for myself, I make hand-stitched boxes um, that are all handmade paper and they're made from a paper that I design that's my box paper. Um, I do wall art also. 
I do a lot of surface design on top of my paper, so I start out with plain papers and do wax resists and, um, and other techniques. I make a line of jewelry, which is fun, from paper. And, um, you know, people have this preconception that paper is fragile and tears easily. But you can make paper, if it's beaten a certain way, you can't even bend it. It's waterproof, it floats, it's, it, it looks like industrial waste because the fibers have shrunk so much and it's gotten really dark and warped. And it's, I mean, paper can be a lot of things. People don't realize that it's very functional. You can make all sorts of things from it. So, um, and I also make lamps and that's fun because light through a sheet of paper is just beautiful. You know, I welcome people to come visit the studio. When I built the studio, it was designed as a working studio, but also a teaching facility. And, and I do have people and groups that come here to do workshops, and, um, and I, that's really fun for me also. Kind of gets me out of my own thing a little bit and involved in some other work.